how much protein should I be eating? What should my family be eating? You know, our guidance to our patients is pretty straightforward and it varies based on their preference. We have some patients who are vegetarians, who have been lifelong vegetarians, who can't stand the feel of meat, right? They're not, they're, this is not like a belief that they have that meat is bad for them. They, they genuinely don't like meat. Um, we have other patients who won't eat any animal products. So they're gonna have a harder time reaching the upper limits of protein consumption. Um, and so, you know, with those people, we're just trying to nudge them as high as we can get them. And that's probably not gonna get much higher than about 1.2 grams per, per kilogram of body weight. But the guidance we're giving people is we really like to see you at about 1.6 to 2. It's an easy heuristic. It's easy to remember too because you're basically consuming almost a pound, uh, a gram per pound of body weight. Um, so how would you advise people? I would say if you just want to survive, stick to the or if you just want to survive, the RDA is probably okay for most people. But if you want to thrive in these goals that most of us share, then I would aim for in the neighborhood of two uh, grams per kilogram per day, per person, spaced out throughout the day. So for example, if you want to pass, you should study this many hours per day and you will get a C. Right. But if you want to have the best shot at getting into the best college you could get into because you want to study engineering, you should probably study this much and you're probably going to need to try to get A's. Great, great analogy. To me, I look at it and say, life support, you know, basic maintenance, RDA. Strong evidence for thriving, two-ish. Above two, probably more benefit, but you're starting to hit the asymptote. I don't know that it's going to come down, right? I don't know of anything that says that it's not going to be monotonic, that's going to turn around. But diminishing benefit and then starting to get into more costs of economic costs of buying fancy products, um, of the costs of the, your time and attention on it, the costs of not eating something else you might like. I know you and I have both sort of, I don't know, struggled with is the right word, but wrangled with fruit. We both like fruit. Uh, and we've both played with diets at times that where we've minimized the consumption of fruit for other goals and yet both perhaps come back to it a little bit and said, I don't want to give up fruit. Um, and, and those are examples I think where you, you, there's some optimization, but I see no harm. And I think the more refined your goals are, then the more it's reasonable to push it a little bit. If I wanted to win the Olympics, um, I'm more motivated to push it. For me, if I can lift one more pound of weight on the bench press, who cares, right? But if I'm trying to win the Olympics, then it matters. So what is your best aggregation of the data on where you start to reach um, diminishing returns? Uh, I think the evidence is very clear that when you go from the RDA level of 0.4-ish uh, grams per pound or 0.8-ish grams per kilogram uh, up into roughly double or even a little bit more of that roughly two. I know no evidence of harm in any group other than perhaps, again, the very rarest folks and even in people with chronic kidney disease or anything else. I think there's lots and lots of evidence for benefit in at least... Um, medium term observable phenomena like body weight, like appetite control, like um, bone um, strength, muscle, and so on for people to be consuming more. And I think it's especially true in people who are recovering from injury, bodybuilding, uh, looking for performance in athletics, looking for strength, uh, who are older, um, who are growing, all of those things. You know, people keep raising these questions of harms. I said, show me the data. Can anybody send me? And it was sincere. I said, this is an open call. And I sent it to like some of the top people in the world, um, including those who, who are a little bit hesitant on protein intake or denigrated. Um, and I said, 
can anybody send me one or more papers that are intervention studies, not observational ones, that are in humans, ideally randomized, but I'll take an intervention even if it's not randomized, but it's got to be controlled. Controlled intervention study in humans feeding different levels of protein in which the different levels of protein intake are separable from other effects that show deleterious effects on a clinically or intrinsically meaningful endpoint, right? Don't show me that this molecule changed or this gut microbiota changed and I, what, what, what do I do with that? What, why do I care that that gut microbiota changed? Nobody cares about those things intrinsically. We care about them only insofar as if they give us heart attacks or strokes or earlier or later death or greater strength or make us better looking, right? We want to, we care about how long we live, how good we look, how we feel, our strength, what we can do. We don't intrinsically care about whether this molecule in our body is higher than that molecule or this gut microbe. And I said, can anybody send me one? Nobody. What you did is the right thing to do, which is look guys, we're, we're having religious debates on social media where people are using their Twitter platforms to like lambast people they disagree with and, you know, call, call them names and do all this sort of nasty stuff. Why don't, we, why don't we just do this like grownups and show me the data, right? Right. And so the data is show me human clinical trial intervention studies that demonstrate the deleterious effects of quote unquote high protein. <laughs>